reducible and irreducible representations. Suppose we have a representation T of a group G. And if we can find a non-singular metric matrix S of the same order as the order of the representation matrices. Uh, for example, if we take T to be an n-dimensional representation, the representation matrices T, G, I would be n by n square matrices. And suppose we can find a non-singular matrix, non-singular square matrix of order n, such that if we take any representation matrix T, G, I, where G, I is an element of G, and construct the matrix T, G, T dash G, I as S inverse T, G, I, S. And if the form of this matrix T dash G, I is given by this, with a block matrix D1 here, then a block with zero elements, another block with uh, maybe non-zero elements and another uh, square block matrix D2. And if this is true for all GIs and if all uh, matrices T dash GI has the same form with, you know, D1 having order M by M and since the order of T dash is N by N, so this should have a uh, number of rows M and number of columns N minus M and therefore X should have order uh, M by N minus M and since we have already covered M rows here, the order of D2 should be N minus M by n minus m and obviously this block of uh, you know zero elements should be of the order n minus m by m and if for all group elements g i the matrix t dash g i constructed this way have the same structure with the same value for m then the representation T is said to be reducible. So the conditions are that uh, there should exist a non-singular matrix S yes, so that we can construct this matrix T dash and for all G i, the elements of the group G, the matrix T dash con constructed this way should have this form, the same form for all G i's. And in that case, we say that the representation T is a reducible representation. Now we have a proposition which says that if the representation T was generated by a set of n basis vectors spanning an n-dimensional vector space Ln, so that is uh, we have representation matrices T, G, I which are uh, square matrices of order N and therefore there will be associated basis vectors in uh, some vector space, n-dimensional vector space L, N. So those basis vectors will be uh, the basis vectors for the representation given by the matrices T. Suppose we have uh, such a set of basis vectors in, in some vector space L, N then the reduction of that representation to a form like this correspond to the existence of a proper m dimensional subspace lm and which is a proper subspace of lm and this subspace should be invariant under g as well so if we have a representation tg which is reducible with a structure like this for these matrices with this D1 having order M by M then this correspond to the existence of a subspace uh, an invariant subspace LM of 
the space in which this representation matrix is defined. So it's defined with respect to some basis vectors in uh, an n-dimensional vector space Ln. So that Ln vector space should have a subspace Lm, a proper subspace Lm, which is invariant under G. And this is something that we are going to prove now. So we start by assuming that Lm is a proper subspace of Ln. So that means the dimension uh, of Lm, which is given by M, should be less than M. Now we consider so uh, Lm is a subspace of Ln and its dimension is less than uh, n. So that means there will be vectors in Ln that are not in Ln. So now if we consider a basis for the space Ln, we can first consider a basis a set of basis vectors, M basis vectors that span the subspace Lm and we label them as Theta sorry C1, Z2, etc. up to Cm. So that span the subspace Lm. Now there will be other vectors in Ln that are not here. So uh, so the, the the subspace Ln slash Lm which correspond to the set of vectors that are in Ln and not in Ln. So that should also be covered. So we need more basis vectors to complete the set of basis vectors of Ln. We have already covered, uh, we have already considered M uh, basis vectors that span Ln. So we need N minus M more basis vectors. And they can be taken to lie entirely outside the space Ln. Or they can be taken to lie in the space Ln slash Ln. And we label them as Z M plus 1, etc. up to Z N. So together Z1, etc. up to Z M, and then Z M plus 1, etc. up to Z N. Uh, we have n basis vectors that span the vector space L. Now, we can consider, so this basis vectors form a representation of the group G and that representation will be denoted by T dash. So that the action of the group element G I on any of these basis vectors Z mu will be given by the equation sum over nu running from 1 to n then the linear combination of Z mu's. So I will write Z nu then the matrix uh, representation is uh, uh, labeled by the symbol T dash. So we have T dash nu mu of gi and that is what we have done here and uh, this is how uh, these vectors transform for any gi in the group g now if we restrict ourselves to uh, the vectors within the invariant subspace lm we only need to consider basis vectors uh, z mu with mu between 1 and m. So we consider mu from 1 to m only. In that case, z mu is in Lm and Lm is an invariant subspace of the group G and therefore Gi acting on z mu should be an element of Lm itself. And therefore, we should be able to represent it as a linear combination of uh, the m basis vector z1 etc up to c m only or if you write it as a linear combination of the entire set of n basis vectors the coefficients corresponding to the basis vectors z m plus 1 etc up to z n should be zero or in other words in this equation 
if mu is restricted between 1 and m, then t dash nu mu with nu greater than m should all be 0. So we end up with the result t dash nu mu gi is equal to 0 if mu is between 1 and m and if nu is greater than m plus 1. So that means if we consider the matrices T for any GI, then the elements with row indices uh, between uh, say row indices uh, starting from M plus 1 and running up to N. So consider those matrices T dash as this and uh, I can draw lines like this. So this is 1 and this is m. So this is 1 and this is m, this is n and this is m. So if the row indices are greater than m, so that is this. And if the column indices mu are less than m, so that is this. So that correspond to this block. And the elements in this block should be 0. So, what we have achieved is the following. The representation T dash generated by the choice of basis vectors Z1, etc. up to Zn that we have just taken will have the following form. We have an M by M block here which we will call as D1 and then an N by M by N minus N by M block which we call as D2 and another block which is m by n minus m in order, which we call as x. And this block will be identically 0. And this is exactly what we have here in the definition of reducibility of a representation. So we can now see that the reducibility of a representation or the existence of a non-singular matrix S, which takes a representation matrix as T to T dash having this form, is actually associated with the existence of an invariant subspace, invari proper invariant subspace Lm of uh, the space of representation T. Further, we can also show that these two matrices D1 and D2 also form representation of the matrix. By the way, if we have a form like this, we have already identified that this corresponds to the existence of an, uh, an m-dimensional uh, proper subspace of Ln. So that corresponds to this block. So we have a subspace Lm and this D1Gi correspond to the representation of the group in the subspace Lm. But then uh, we don't know whether Ln slash Lm which is of dimension n minus m is actually uh, an invariant subspace of G or not. And in fact this block matrix D2 is acting in that space and there is no guarantee if this x is non-zero that uh, a vector in that subspace under the action of g will always be in that subspace. So if it is not zero it will not be in that subspace. It may be taken to uh, this subspace as well. Even then, we can show that both these matrices D1 and D2 form representation of the group. To see this, we consider uh, the product of T dash GI and T dash GJ. Now, because T dash is a representation, we know that this should be equal to T dash GI GJ. We can also explicitly multiply the met, uh, representation matrices T dash GI and T dash GJ. So it's given by 
d1gi xgi 0 d2gi then the second matrix will have gi replaced by gj by using the properties of uh, multiplication of block matrices the result would be uh, d1 multiplying this d1 first plus xg multiplying 0 which will be 0 so the first block will be d1 gi times d1 gj so this is block 1 1 so what about block 1 2 so that is given by uh, d1 multiplying xj plus xj multiplying dk so that is equal to d1 gi xgj plus xgi multiplying d2 gj now this block that is uh, block 2 1 is given by uh, 0 multiplying this plus this multiplying that but this is 0 and this product is also 0 and therefore we have 0 as the block 2 1 and the block 2 2 is obtained by 0 multiplying x d j plus d 2 g i multiplying d 2 g j so 0 multiplying x d j is 0 plus this product is d 2 g i times d 2 g j so we have t dash g i g j equal to this block Now, T dash is a representation and uh, uh, this has been, uh, so this is obtained from T by reduction and therefore it should have this form. T dash GI GJ should be uh, D1 GI GJ then X GI GJ 0 D2 GI GJ. So comparing, so now this is exactly same as this. So the right hand side should also be the same. And comparison immediately tells us that this is consistent and for this to be consistent this should be equal to this this should be equal to that this should be equal to this so equating this and this we have d1 gi gj equal to d1 gi times d1 gj also equating this and this we have d2 gi times d2 gj equal to d2 gi gj and both these matrices d1 and d2 satisfy the property required for group representation so we can generally write d alpha gi gj equal to d alpha gi times d alpha gj for alpha equal to 1 and 2 and therefore d1 and d2 both forms representations of g and we also remember that uh, Lm slash Lm may not be invariant under G unless X, this matrix X is equal to 0. Now, if a similarity transformation exists for a given representation T such that the transform matrix T dash Gi is block diagonal that is t dash t i equal to s inverse t g i s is actually block diagonal with two blocks d1 g i and d2 g i with these two blocks equal to zero and if such a transformation exists then the representation is said to be completely reducible and in that case this t dash gi will have this form but this is nothing but the direct sum of the matrices t1 gi direct sum t2 gi and that's what we have written here so we have a remark here if these matrices the representation matrices are unitary it is necessarily so that this off diagonal blocks are zero so in that case we can show 
we can say that all reducible unitary representations of a finite group are completely reducible. So we can always find a unitary, so a, 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 a similarity transformation given by a non-singular matrix S such that the matrices T dash constructed this way is block diagonal. Now it may so happen that a particular representation may not be reducible by the method described here. So if there exists no non-singular matrix S such that a transformation like this will never lead to a decomposition of the form given by this equation, then such a representation is called an irreducible representation of the group G. Irreducible decomposition. Suppose uh, we have a completely reducible representation. That means we can find a similarity transformation which will uh, transform the representation matrices into a block diagonal form. Suppose uh, we have such a representation, completely reducible representation, and we can find a similarity transformation uh, such that uh, the block diagonal form obtained is such that each block is irreducible. So that means we have a representation T which is completely reducible and if we can we can find uh, you know a similarity transformation such that S inverse T S is block diagonal with say block given by A, B, C, D etc. And all the off diagonal blocks are zero. And that each of these blocks, A, B, C, etc., uh, and D, etc., are not reducible any further. So there exists no transformation, there exists no similarity transformation which can further reduce these blocks into smaller blocks. Then the representation can be written as uh, say the direct sum of these blocks that is this is call it as t dash then t dash will be uh, written as say uh, this as written as the direct sum of the matrices a direct sum b direct sum c direct sum d Now, it, suppose, you know, we have a representation T uh, which have, which contain, say, uh, R irreducible representations of the group G. And these representations will be denoted as uh, D1, uh, D2, etc. up to DR. Remember, all these representations are irreducible representations of the group. So, uh, given a representation T, if I can find a similarity transformation S, which will completely reduce the representation to the block diagonal form, uh, then we will say uh, that, or, or the, uh, this action whereby we completely reduce or decompose uh, the representation into the into a block diagonal form in which all blocks are irreducible is called the reduction or irreducible decomposition of the representation. Now, if the irreducible representations of the group are denoted by D1, D2, etc. up to Dr. And in a particular, uh, in, in a decomposition or com a reduction of a particular representation T, 
these blocks will be one of these representations. For example, A could be any of the D1, D2, etc. up to DR. Similarly, B could be uh, one of D1, D2, etc. up to DR and so on. And in this reduction, it may so happen that a particular irreducible representation, say DI, may appear more than once or may not appear at all. So let AI denote the number of times a particular irreducible representation DI of the group appears in the reduction of a representation T. So we have a representation T of the group and we consider a complete reduction of that representation and in that reduction if uh, the irreducible representation DI appears AI times then this representation or in fact the transformed representation can be written as the direct sum of say suppose uh, D1 appears twice the A and C are uh, D1 so we may write it as D1 direct sum say B is D2 so as I said C is D1 again say D is say D3 But instead of writing D1 twice, I may also write it symbolically as 2 times D1 plus D2 plus D3. Or in general, if the ith decomposition appears Ai times, and here A1 is 2, A2 is 1, and A3 is 1. So I may also write it as uh, say A1 times D1 then direct sum A2 times D2 and so on. So, and that is what I have written here. So if there are only R irreducible representations for a group then uh, the complete reduction of a given representation T can be represented as this because you know a d1 the irreducible representation d1 will appear a1 times d2 will appear a2 times and so on and this is equivalently written as this direct sum okay. so the process of uh, reducing a completely reducible representation of a group by means of a similarity transformation whereby we end up with a block diagonal uh, form where each block is irreducible is called the reduction or irreducible decomposition of the representation. Now we consider a very important theorem in representation theory called the unitarization theorem which says that any representation of a finite group is equivalent through a similarity transformation to a unitary representation of the group. So given a finite group and any representation, we can always find a similarity transformation that will take this representation to an equivalent unitary representation. So for all practical purposes from now onwards, whenever we are concerned with finite groups, we may consider the representation of the group as unitary. So we now proceed to prove this theorem. So let E be an n-dimensional representation of a finite group G. So that means for every element G i, there will be a corresponding representation matrix T G I. Then we can define a matrix H which is summation over all G I, the elements of G of T dagger G I times T G I. So that is this matrix. 
and this matrix have a special property that if I multiply it with T dagger GJ from left and T GJ from right, we will get H. So we can see this in the following way. So consider H and multiply it from the left with T dagger GJ and from the right with T GJ and we replace H by uh, it's this form given by the summation. So this is equal to T dagger GJ and this summation in TJ. Matrix multiplication is linear and therefore I can take this matrix inside and similarly this matrix also inside the sum. So we will end up with this sum over GI, then T dagger GJ, then this T dagger GI, and then TGI and TGJ. But this can be written as the adjoint of TGI times TGJ because A B dagger is equal to B dagger A dagger. And therefore, TGI times TGJ dagger equal to TGJ dagger times TGI dagger. This one. Now, T is a representation, and therefore, this product is nothing but T of GI GJ. And similarly, this is also T of GI GJ. So we will end up with this equation. Now the summation is over GI, all elements of the group. And we are multiplying all elements of the group by GJ here and taking summation of this function over GI, GJ. So if I multiply all elements of the group G with a particular element GJ, uh, the rearrangement lemma says that it reproduces all the elements of the group but in a different order. So instead of taking summation over GI, I could also take summation over G, the product GI, GJ. So if I call GI, GJ as GK, so summation over I, F of GI, GJ is equivalent to summation over K, F of GK where GK is equal to G i times G j. So this is what we learned earlier uh, while discussing the rearrangement lemma. So calling G i G j as G k, this summation can be written as summation over G k and this will become summation over G k T dagger G k T G k. Now comparing it with this definition of H, this summation is nothing but H. And therefore, we have proved our claim that T dagger GJ H times T GJ is equal to H. So the second property of H is that it is also Hermitian. So to see this, consider H dagger, which is equal to sum over uh, GI, then T dagger GI T GI a dagger of whole thing. But now we remember uh, the property of adjoint of a sum of matrices. If we have sum over i a i and if I want to take the adjoint of that, that will be equal to sum over i a i dagger. So that means this is nothing but sum over g i and then the adjoint of this product. So that is what we have written here. So sum over GI, then T dagger GI, T GI, the dagger of that. Now remember AB dagger equal to B dagger A dagger. So using that over here, this would be equal to T GI dagger times T dagger GI dagger. So T dagger GI dagger. So remember A dagger dagger is A. So this is nothing but T G I. So we have 
uh, this equal to sum over gi then the dagger of this times dagger of this which is simply tgi so this is equal to t dagger gi times tgi but this summation is nothing but h and therefore we have shown that h dagger equals h now since h is hermitian it is diagonalizable by a unitary transformation so let u be the unitary transformation that diagonalizes it by a unitary transformation okay so the diagonal matrix will be denoted by lambda so lambda is equal to u dagger h u where u is unitary that is u dagger u is the identity matrix so this is diagonal and since h is hermitian the eigenvalues will all be real and the diagonal matrix can be written as and since it is uh, an n by n matrix it will have n real eigenvalues and can be written as diagonal lambda 1 etc to lambda n where all these lambda 1 lambda 2 etc represents the eigenvalues and all of them are real now further we can also prove that h is also positive definite so that means all the eigenvalues uh, are positive not negative or zero they are all positive to see this we consider uh, the equation for lambda which is lambda equals u dagger h u so lambda equals u dagger and h is replaced by the sum sum over g i t dagger g i t g i and u and as i have told you earlier the matrix multiplication is linear i can take this inside the sum and this also inside the sum and i will end up with this summation sum over g i and u dagger and this one then this one t dagger g i and then t g i u but then this is simply equal to the adjoint of t g i times u because this is equal to u dagger times t g i dagger okay so lambda equals sum over g i t g i times u dagger then t g i times u so let us consider the diagonal element so lambda is a diagonal matrix and the eigenvalue the lth eigenvalue is given by the uh, diagonal entry lambda l l so lambda l the eigenvalue is simply lambda l l but lambda is given by this sum so i just need to take the l lth element of this so this is the product of two matrices the l lth element of say a b l l is simply a sum over p a l p b l p and instead of a i have t g i times u and instead of b again i have t g i times u so using this formula i have lambda l which is equal to lambda l l is and this summation is out there then this summation over p so summation over p running from 1 to n then the lpth element of this times the p lth element of this so t g i times u dagger l p times t g i u p l now a dagger l p is equal to a star p l so this is equal to the complex conjugate of the lp sorry the p lth element of t times u so this can be written as t g i u the p lth element and then the complex conjugate times t g i u the p lth element so a complex number complex conjugate of a complex number times the complex number is the mod square of that complex number and therefore this is equal to t g i u then the p lth element the mod square of that so we have just shown that the lth eigenvalue lambda l is 
simply a sum over g i and sum over p of mod square of complex numbers uh, t u p l each of which are either zero or positive it cannot be negative because uh, the modulus square of a complex number is non-negative so we have shown that lambda l is a sum of non-negative numbers and therefore it should be a non-negative number as well it could be zero or positive now we will uh, show that lambda l cannot be zero either so it has to be strictly positive to see that let us consider the situation where lambda l can be zero so here lambda l is a sum and it is a sum of non-negative numbers and a sum of non-negative numbers can be zero only if each term in that sum is zero so that means each of these terms is zero so that means the modulus of uh, t u p l should be zero for all p's and for all g i's so uh, the modulus of a complex number is zero only if the complex number is zero and that means all these elements for all values of p and for all group elements g i should be zero So that means uh, for all values of p this should be zero means the lth column because p correspond to the row index and for each row index the lth column should be zero. The elements in the lth column should be zero. So lth column as such i is going to be identically zero. Now uh, you know we can consider the determinant of this product matrix the lth column of which is zero. And the determinant can be found by expanding along that column and since all elements in that column are zero the expansion along that column for the determinant will give the result zero so uh, if lambda l is equal to zero that means uh, this product t g i times u should be zero as well the determinant of t g i times u should be zero as well but now we see that u is a unitary matrix its determinant is either plus one or minus one and t is a representation matrix it is non-single and therefore its determinant is non-zero so we have u which is non-singular has a determinant non-zero and t also has non-zero determinant now the determinant of the product of two matrices is simply the product of the individual determinants so if i take the product of two non-zero numbers it is a non-zero number and therefore obviously this matrix cannot have zero as its determinant <laughs> because t is non-singular and so is u Now, if lambda n is zero, then uh, this is zero for all p and g i. That means for all g i, uh, this product should have zero determinant, but it cannot have zero determinant because t and u are not singular. So that means lambda l cannot be zero. So the only remaining possibility here is that lambda l is strictly positive, not zero. And not negative so since all lambda l are positive we can define a matrix lambda p which is again a uh, diagonal matrix with diagonal entries given by say lambda 1 to the power p lambda to the 2 to the power p and so on and all of diagonal entries being zero Now p could be any real number. Remember, if one of these lambdas were zero, then uh, we have to avoid taking p to be negative because in that case, if I take uh, p to be some uh, negative number, for example, uh, p is equal to minus two, 
and lambda 1 is 0, that will end up with say lambda 1 to the power p would be 0 to the power minus 2, so 1 by 0, which is infinity, and therefore this matrix will not be properly defined. So now that we have demonstrated that all eigenvalues lambda L are positive, strictly positive, we can define this matrix for all real values P. And uh, the matrix is well defined. Further, if I take the product of these matrices, lambda P times lambda Q, we can show, since this is diagonal, uh, it is very easy to multiply uh, the matrices and we will see that this is equal to lambda p plus q so that is suppose uh, you know as an example we can consider a, a 2 by 2 matrix with uh, uh, say lambda is equal to say lambda 1 0 0 lambda 2 so if i consider lambda square so lambda into lambda we will see that this is equal to lambda 1 square 0 0 lambda 2 square and uh, lambda to the power p which is lambda multiplied p times we can see that this is lambda 1 to the power p 0 0 lambda 2 to the power p and if i multiply lambda to the power p with lambda to the power q we can see that this is equal to lambda to the power p plus q 0 lambda 2 to the power p plus q which is nothing but lambda to the power p plus q remember p and q could be any real number including 0 when it is 0 that means this would be lambda 1 to the power 0 lambda 2 to the power 0 and we will have lambda to the power 0 is 1 0 0 1 the identity matrix Further, uh, since these diagonal entries are real, if I take the adjoint of this and I will get lambda dagger will be uh, adjoint of this would be lambda 1 star 0 0 lambda 2 star, but lambda 1 is real and therefore lambda 1 star is lambda 1. Again, lambda 2 is real and therefore that is equal to lambda 2 as well. So, lambda dagger is equal to lambda. And similarly, we can show that lambda p dagger is equal to lambda p as well. Now, from this result that lambda p times lambda q equals lambda p plus q, if I write q as minus p, we have lambda p times lambda minus p is equal to lambda p plus minus p which is 0 that is the identity matrix or in other words the inverse of lambda p is nothing but lambda to the power minus p so we have these two important results that is Lambda p times lambda q is lambda p plus q. Lambda p inverse is lambda minus p. And the adjoint of lambda to the power p is simply lambda to the power p. Then we can define the non-singular matrix S equal to u lambda to the power minus half. Remember, lambda to the power any real number is well defined. And it is a diagonal matrix with diagonal entries given by that. And since all lambda L's are positive, uh, we will always get real values as uh, the powers lambda L to the power P. Now, since all these diagonal entries are non-zero, it is obviously non-singular. And therefore, lambda to the power minus half is also non-singular. U is unitary and therefore it is non-singular as well. So the product of two non-singular matrices is a non-singular matrix. So S defined in this way is a non-singular matrix. 
further i can find its inverse so s inverse is equal to u lambda to the power minus half inverse but a b inverse is b inverse times a inverse and therefore this is equal to lambda minus half to the power minus one then u inverse but the inverse of lambda to the power p is lambda to the power minus p so for lambda to the power minus half the inverse is lambda to the power half and the inverse of u is u dag so defining s is equal to u lambda to the power minus half we have s inverse is equal to lambda to the power half u dag now once we got this uh, uh, non singular matrix starting from uh, the representation t we can define an equivalent representation by the following similarity transformation so we call the new representation gamma so gamma gi is equal to s inverse t gi times s so uh, instead of s inverse i will explicitly write this so that is gamma to the power half u dagger then this t g i and then s is given by u lap gamma to the power minus half now i can find its adjoint so adjoint of this so this has uh, uh, this is a product of five matrices so if i take the adjoint of gamma g i dagger which we denote by this gamma dagger symbol placed here of g i is equal to the adjoint of gamma to the power half u dagger p g i u gamma to the power minus half dagger so this is equal to the product of uh, the adjoints of these matrices taken in the reverse over so reverse order so i will have first gamma to the power minus half dagger then u dagger then t of g i dagger then this u dagger dagger and lambda to the power half but as i told you earlier or we have shown here gamma to the power p dagger is simply gamma p so this will be simply gamma to the power minus half this is u dagger and this is p dagger g i u dagger dagger is u and gamma to the power half dagger is uh, gamma to the power half and this is exactly this result so uh, we now have an equivalent representation given by gamma we just need to show that this matrices gamma are unitary to show that we can we compute gamma dagger gamma so gamma dagger gi times gamma is in for gamma dagger i substitute this and for gamma i substitute that so when i do that i will have this long expression and there uh, since the matrix multiplication is associative i can take uh, you know the order in which i take the product doesn't matter so i can first take the product of these two gamma to the power half times gamma to the power half and as i told you earlier gamma to the power p times gamma to the power q is gamma to the power p plus q and so this is equal to gamma to the power half plus half which is gamma so then this becomes gamma to the power minus half u dagger t dagger then this u then this gamma so gamma then this u dagger u dagger t g i that's over here and gamma to the power minus half now what is u lambda u dagger remember lambda was the diagonal form of h obtained by the transformation u dagger h u and therefore u lambda u dagger is u 
Then for lambda, I substitute u dagger hu and then u dagger. Remember u, u dagger is identity matrix because u is unitary and so is this one. So the result u lambda u dagger is h. So we have gamma lambda to the power minus half and uh, uh, this u dagger then this t dagger gi and this is replaced by h then this tgi then this u and lambda to the power minus half. Now we go back to uh, the earlier res result that we got here, which says that T dagger GJ H T G J is equal to H for any GJ, any element GJ of the group G. And these are exactly similar expression that we have got here. So T dagger G I H tgi and that should be equal to h so then this equation simplifies to gamma to the power minus half then this u dagger and this is h and this is u so that u is here and lambda to the power minus half but u dagger h u is nothing but lambda so i have lambda to the power minus half then this lambda and lambda to the power minus half. Now remember lambda to the power p plus lambda to the power q is lambda to the power p plus q. And therefore this product is lambda to the power 1 plus minus half and that is half. Then I take the product with this. So that will be lambda to the power minus half plus half which is lambda to the power 0 which is the identity matrix. So we have seen that lam, uh, gamma dagger gi gamma gi is equal to the identity matrix or in other words the matrices gamma are unitary so this proves that given any finite group any representation of a finite group is equivalent to a unitary representation uh, by means of an appropriate similarity transformation. So, uh, to prove theorems and uh, uh, results later uh, concerning finite groups, we can always assume that the representation under consideration is unitary. If it is not unitary, it is always possible to construct an equivalent unitary transformation, uh, unitary representation by means of uh, an appropriate similarity transformation which we discussed here.